Hi, my name is Mike Roroff, and this is Life of Worship. Over the last few weeks, I've been going over the armor of God, and this week I am going to be talking about the sword of the Spirit. The sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, the truth of God, the truth that we believe. The sword that Paul is referring to in Ephesians 6, 17 is a short sword or a dagger. It was extremely difficult to approach a soldier who was well-trained uh, with this weapon. It was incredibly sharp, and it had two edges so that the edges made it easier for the soldier to be able to uh, use the weapon without changing the position of his hand. The sword also had that sharp point, and that sharp point could actually pierce armor. A sword can be ready for battle, but it is only as good as the one who uses it. I went to a gun range a few years ago, and when I was firing the weapon, I could have sworn that somebody put blanks in it, or that somebody was playing a prank on me because the target that I was shooting at was completely unfazed. And then so I gave it to somebody else and they destroyed the target with like two shots. And I was like, okay, clearly I'm not very good at, very good at shooting this weapon. I realized that it was a terrible shot and that I needed to practice. Um, it is the same with the sword. We need to know the word and we need to be able to practice with it. It is interesting that in Paul's list of the armor, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, is the only piece that is used for attack. So since it is there for battle, we must learn to use it. And don't be daunted by this. If you haven't started already, start today. It is a good day to start. I promise you that. And if you know a lot of scripture, keep it sharp and apply it. It does you no good to know it and don't use it when you're faced with battle. Second Corinthians 10, 3 through 5, it talks about the arguments that come against the word. And then when, when you know the word, you're able to strike down those arguments. And that, that's why it's good to know the scripture and then to apply it and use it so that we can strike down the arguments that come against. And so we can recognize those arguments as well. Because sometimes they come as... Uh, they come a little disguised, and so you don't know, is this true or is this not? And so when we know the scripture, then we are able to know what the truth is. There are many lies out there, viewpoints that sound good, but fall short of the standard set in God's word. The word of God cuts through the noise and cuts through the lies and brings clarity. It brings life and truth, cutting through the enemy's attacks and arguments. So use it with wisdom and compassion towards people, because I think sometimes, oh, we got this sword, and we're just going to just cause so much destruction for the Lord. But I think what the Lord is wanting is he's wanting us to use it with wisdom and compassion towards people, but with zero tolerance against the enemy. Okay, so that's, that's my viewpoint on that, and I really believe that to be true because Jesus, he always was showing people love. He was always showing people compassion. Um, but when it came to the lies of the enemy, he was cutting through them, and he, he would have zero tolerance for them. So there was a second use for the sword. In battle, sometimes a soldier would get hit by an arrow. The soldier's sword was also used for digging those arrows out. And that sounds horrific and that sounds gross, but if you really think about it, that's the best way for healing to start. The Bible is truth, and sometimes when these truths are spoken, it can feel like a sword is entering our very souls. Hebrews 4.12 says that the word is like a double-edged sword. So if we cringe, if we, if we hear a truth and it, and it hits our hearts, and we cringe, and we push the word away. The lies of the enemy will go deeper, and they will fester, and then soon, here's what's going to happen, is we're going to start to look at the word, which is meant to heal us. We're going to start to look at God's living word as the enemy. So before we run around telling the world how off base they are, we need to look at ourselves and dig out anything that goes against God. When we realize the growth we need, this can be painful, all right? I know there's been multiple times in my life where I've looked at Scripture and I'm like, oh, I didn't even realize that I was doing that. And, and then I had to change my heart and I had to change my attitude and it wasn't pleasant. But that's what the sword of the Spirit does. It separates those things that are, that are um, of God and not of God and takes those things that are not of God and removes them. And so even though it is unpleasant in the time, it is really for our good, and it helps us to grow in the Lord and to grow for him. So it, ultimately, it is healing, and it is absolutely freeing. In Luke 18, Jesus tells a, ter a, a parable about a Pharisee and a tax collector. The Pharisee, what he is doing is he is in church. 
He's dressed in his garments. He looks great. And he is raising his hands and he's talking in a loud voice and he's saying, I am a great man and blah, blah, blah. And I'm just so glad I'm not like the sinners, like that tax collector in the back who's a mess. I'm glad I'm not like them. And then Jesus switches the focus to the tax collector and the tax collector is beating his breast and he is saying, I am an unworthy sinner. I, I am not worthy of your mercy. I am not worthy of your grace. And he is back there and he is repenting. And Jesus says that it is better to be like that tax collector, to allow the sword of truth to pierce our hearts, to realize how sinful we are so that his grace and his mercy can enter in. The Pharisee couldn't see that he needed a change of heart and he was too proud to let the truth of the word cut the ugliness out of his heart. The tax collector saw what was needed and he let it cut him. Ultimately, who was free? The tax collector was free. Who was healed? The tax collector was healed. And so he was no longer known as a tax collector, but he was known as a son of God because he allowed the, the word of God to, to cut out what was ugly inside of him. And so as we read God's word, we hide his word in our heart so that we may not sin against him and so that we can be pleasing to him because we just love him so much. We need to hold the word of God in honor. And I'm gonna, I need to say that again. We need to hold the word of God in honor. How many Bibles do we have that just sit collecting dust? How often do we open the word for ourselves? God has spoken to us in the word. What an honor. What access that he has given to us. What a precious treasure. What a weapon. These words are God's thoughts. Stories of his mercy and his grace. His heart for us. His power towards us. And, and, and him living inside of us. Use the powerful God-inspired word in battle. He, the Holy Spirit, our helper, is fighting with you. And he is fighting for you. There is no, this is no small thing. This is creation power. This is salvation power. This is healing and deliverance power. This is atmosphere changing power right at our fingertips. So I don't know if any of you have seen the Lord of the Rings, the two towers, but there is a scene in there where the king, there is a king who had not held his sword in a long time. In a powerful scene, he wraps his fingers around his sword and said that his hands had forgotten the feel of his sword. You see his eyes light up and hope and strength return and his whole demeanor is changed when he, when he feels his sword, when he feels the power behind his sword, when he feels the authority that that sword can bring. And I think as a church, some of us have forgotten what the sword of the Spirit feels like. And so let's pick it up. Let's pick it up and feel the power. Let it revive you. Let it open our mouths and set the captives free, breaking oppressive change chains, lifting heads and hearts with the power of the Holy Spirit. The word is our victory in battle. This is our life of worship. So be strong and be courageous. Pull out your sword and remember how it feels. I pray that this has encouraged you and I pray that your week is blessed and I, I look forward to seeing you again next week. Have a great week.